Hi folks, this is Nat, and this is going to be a video lesson on how we can use variable expressions to represent patterns that we see between uh, sets of numbers. Sometimes we think about these as input and output values, um, but let me show you what I mean. Imagine as kind of a simple example here that we've got a guy named Bill working. Um, I don't know what job he works, it doesn't really matter. Um, but let's say that we know that when he worked three hours, he made $18. And when he worked four hours, he made $24. And when he worked seven hours, he made $42. We can actually take this pattern of amount worked and the amount of money he makes and describe it using a variable expression. And the thing we need to be looking for is basically what's the pattern. If you can identify the pattern, you can write it as a variable expression. Um, so we might think to ourselves, just based on what I know about how people's pay works, maybe Bill is making like an hourly rate. And so 3 becomes 18. Well, what times 3 makes 18? 3 times 6 makes 18. Or, so that's an idea, and I can check to see if that works. Does 4 times 6 make eight, 24? It does. Does 7 times 6 make 42? It does. And if the rule I've thought for myself explains all of the information that I have, I can be very confident that this is the correct rule. And I can then take that and represent it as a variable expression. To do that, I'm going to have to start by figuring out what variable I'm working with. In this case, the thing that's changing, or one of the things that's changing, is the hours that Bill works. And I might represent that with the variable h. From there, I think to myself, well, what am I doing to h? It seems like I'm multiplying it by 6. No matter what the value of h was, I multiplied it by 6 to get the pay. So my variable expression could be written a number of ways. It could be h times 6, or maybe 6 times h, or h times 6 written this way, 6h. Remember, that also means 6 times h. And that's a variable expression. And it represents the pattern that we're seeing here in this situation. So to summarize, any of these, 6h for example, is a variable expression to help find Bill's pay given the number of hours he works. Let's look at another example. Let's imagine that somebody goes out to the mall and they start spending money. And we find out that the first thing, if they had spent $4, they would have $28 remaining. And if they had spent, um, I don't know, seven dollars they would have had twenty five dollars remaining and if they spent ten dollars they would have twenty two dollars remaining again we can start looking for the pattern here between the numbers to find a variable expression to represent this scenario and it helps in this situation to kind of know what's happening. Somebody's spending money and has money left over. Um, well, the thing that's missing, it seems like, is how much money did this person start with? Because the amount of money that I begin with is probably going to determine how much money I have remaining if I spend some. So that seems like some missing information. So kind of having a good understanding of the scenario can help me figure out what the pattern is. Because this one would probably be tricky if I just wrote down these numbers and didn't have any context. So one thing that I'm noticing is that if I look at these paired up, 4 and 28, 7 and 25, 10 and 22, if I add them together, they all make 32. 7 plus 25 is 32, 10 plus 22 is 32, and that makes me think maybe this person started out with $32. So I'm going to write the variable expression, $32 that I started out with, or this person started out with, 
minus dollars spent, that's dollars spent, maybe I'll call that D, might be my variable expression, and I can check it. Let's see. So 32 minus 4 would make 28, so that works. 32 minus 7 makes 25, so that works. And 32 minus 10 makes 22, so that works. So I think that I have a variable expression that's going to work here. 32 minus D would account for the amount of money I have remaining in this scenario. Sometimes, though, we don't have the luxury of kind of knowing the scenario we're dealing with when we're looking at sets of numbers. Um, and we have to just kind of figure it out strictly from the numbers we have and try and figure out what's happening. So here we've got a bunch of x values and then essentially what are outputs. And this can be a little bit tricky, particularly if there's more than one thing happening. Because not all expressions are just multiplication or just subtraction or just division. Some of them have more than one thing happening, like you might be multiplying and subtracting, or dividing and adding. In those scenarios, it's really helpful to be able to look for patterns. So one thing I'm noticing is that my numbers in my x column are just jumping up by 1 each time. So every time it goes up by 1, the numbers in my output column are going up by 3. So when x increases by 1, my output increases by 3. That might generally make you think to yourself, well, I'm probably adding 3, like x plus 3, but it doesn't actually turn out that way. When you're seeing these patterns in the output value, that's actually multiplication. So if I see it increasing by 3 every time, that's a really strong indication that I'm actually multiplying my x value by 3. Because as the x goes up by 1, say from 3 to 4, that get extra 1 gets tripled and I end up with an extra 3. So good indication that I've got some multiplication happening here. And I can actually begin writing my expression that way. I can say, well, I think I'm taking x and multiplying it by 3. So I'm going to say 3x, 3 times x. Now here as I look at this, 3x by itself doesn't really account for this, because if I do times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, I end up with 9 and 12 and 15 and 18, which doesn't quite get me to the numbers I'm trying to get. But hopefully from here I can see a really quick, easy pattern from 9 to 10, 12 to 13, 15 to 16, 18 to 19. That's an increase of 1, so plus 1 is going to be the rest of that expression. So kind of to sum that up, what's really important to do here is look for those patterns, follow them through, and then kind of adjust accordingly. I'll show you another one like that. Here we've got uh, the value m, and it goes 4, 5, 6, 7. Um, so again, we're kind of seeing that plus 1 each time. So really nice, consistent increase. That makes it easier to find those patterns. Um, and then on the other side, we're seeing 18, 23, 28, 33. And again, that's a really consistent increase. I'm going up by 5 each time, from 18 to 23 to 28 to 33. And so, again, when I see an increase of 5 in my output value each time, that doesn't mean I'm adding 5 to m. It actually means I'm multiplying m by 5. So m times 5, or 5m. Again, though, that's not the whole story. I must be doing something else here, because if I do 4 times 5, that actually is 20. Doesn't get me to 18. Similarly down here, 5 times 5 is 25. Doesn't get me to 23. That doesn't mean that I'm not multiplying by 5. What it means is that I'm doing something else as well. So to get from 20 to 18, in addition to multiplying by 5, I'm going to have to subtract 2. And the same thing down here. From 25 to 23, 
I'm going to have to take away 2. So two things happening. I'm taking m, multiplying it by 5, and then subtracting 2 afterwards. And we can see that that works here for the 6 and the 7. 6 times 5 is 30, minus the 2 is 28. 7 times 5 is 35, minus the 2 is the 33. So I've got my expression that matches really well. Now getting used to finding these patterns can be a little bit challenging, but if you practice it, you'll get used to it relatively quickly. It's not super hard once you kind of get the trick. So here are a couple quick guidelines to help you kind of get through these a little bit faster. Some patterns that you should probably notice and know. Um, first off, if you're seeing a consistent increase from your input to your x output value, so in other words, it's always getting bigger, that's a good indication that it's either multiplication or division. Sorry, I meant uh, multiplication or addition. So if the value is getting bigger from the input over here, the input to the output, so increasing from input to output, we're typically dealing with addition or multiplication. Because those are generally our operations that make things bigger. And the opposite is also true. If you're generally seeing your input value decreasing as you get to the output, you're either going to be dealing probably with subtraction or division. So when values are dropping, that's usually subtraction or division. Now keep in mind that it might be a combination of things. If your values are generally decreasing, it might be division, but you might also have to add as well, or something like that. Or you might see that your values are generally increasing, but it's multiplication with subtraction. So this is just a general rule. It's not going to solve all your problems for you. And here's some practice problems for you to work on this with. Uh, there's four of them. There's no information given, so this is strictly pattern recognition. Um, for each of these, you need to write a variable expression for each of them to uh, describe the pattern that you're seeing between the input and output values. Alrighty, good luck.